The Pot Boiler by Alice Gersenberg. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Gus the Stagehand, read by John Fricker. Thomas Pitiful Sud, the playwright, read by Todd. Would be, read by Max Schurlinger. Mr. Ivory, financier, read by Algy Pug. Mr. Ruler, the hero, read by John Fricker. Miss Ivory, the heroine, read by Ariel Lipshaw. Mr. Inkwell, the villain, read by Bershacht. Mrs. Pencil, the woman, read by Elizabeth Clatt. Narrator, read by Christine G. A stage only half set for a morning rehearsal and dimly lighted. Sud, a successful playwright, enters in a hurry, carrying a leather bag of manuscripts. Good morning, Mr. Sud. Good morning, Gus. Just set two doors. That'll be all I'll need this morning. We're rehearsing for lines. Steps down stage and calls front. Joe, I'm expecting a young man. That's all right. Let him in. From auditorium back. I'm here now, Mr. Sud. Come up, Mr. Woodby. Some more border lights, please. It's very good of you to let me in. I was fond of your father. I am glad to see his son. I have written a play, too. Too bad, too bad. You make the price of paper go up. Ah, it must be wonderful to be the master playwright of our day. Everybody knows Mr. Thomas Pinnacle's Sud. Setting stage. Yes, it is a privilege to be a friend of mine. Pursuing Sud. Will you read my manuscript, sir? Never roll a manuscript. I see very well that you don't even know the first principles. How can I learn the first principles? No one will tell me. Wait, I will do a great thing for you. Let you stay and see a dress rehearsal of my latest play, The Pot Boiler. In it, I have used all dramatic principles. What are they? Well, for instance, this pencil is the woman in the case. Pencil? This inkwell is the villain, although that's really too dark for him. Dark-eyed villains are out of fashion. Inkwell. The heroine is Miss Ivory Papercutter. Ivory? A Mr. Ruler is the hero. Ruler. Other characters enter from stage door. I haven't finished writing it, but we're going through it this morning as far as I have written. Then we shall see how to go on. Here are the players now. Line up, please, and let me see your costumes. He studies them. Now to work. Rubbing his hands. To work. Clear the stage. Mrs. Pencil and Ruler go out left. Mr. and Miss Ivory and Inkwell go out right and close the door. Mr. Woodby, if you would sit down here with me, we'll be out of the way. Sud and Woodby sit on two stools way down right. You must imagine that this room is the library in Mr. Ivory's house. Sud claps his hands and calls. Ready! There is a pause, then the door up left opens, and Mrs. Pencil comes in. Her pantomime is, as Sud explains it to Woodby. In stage whisper to Woodby. The adventuress. She comes in. She has been cut. She is worried. That nervous twitching of lips and the narrowing of eyes are always full of suspense. She takes off her gloves. Her hat. That's good business. A door opens. She starts. By starting, she shows you she is guilty of something. Without hat or gloves, enters from right. Oh, there you are, Mrs. Pencil. Yes, I'm back. I thought I should have to drink my tea without you. They sit down to tea. Miss Ivory back at the table centre. Mrs. Pencil left of table. In stage whisper to Woodby. That tells the audience what time of the day it is. Besides, drinking afternoon tea shows Miss Ivory is in society. Isn't your father going to join us? Aside. That's merely to show the girl has a father. No, he is talking business with Mr. Inkwell. Starting. Inkwell? Yes, do you know him? Evasively. I? Oh, no. You've heard of him? Yes, of course. Aside. Did you catch it? Did you see how her nervousness and her few words at once suggest that there is a link between Mrs. Pencil and Inkwell? That's where I show my technique. Scratching his head. Technique? How can I learn it? It is a secret that every playwright locks in his breast. Keep the young ones out. Mom is the word. I am so sorry father has all this trouble with the bricklayers. 
They shouldn't have gone on a strike just now when you are visiting us. Two would be. That tells that Mrs. Pencil is a guest in Miss Ivory's house. When you were here last year, my mother— Aside. The girl hesitates. They both look sorrowful. We had to cut down the cast, so I killed off her mother. Sadly, with foreign accent. Ah, my dear, we were such close friends. Since my arrival in this country— Aside. You see, I had to make her a foreigner. A villainess always talks with a foreign accent. I haven't had much time to read particulars about the strike. Does your father still refuse to arbitrate? Haughtily. What right have bricklayers to make rules for my father? He would show his weakness if he gave in. I have faith that what he does is right. To would be. The innocent heroine, so cool and pure and white. The right door opens, and Inkwell enters. He starts as he sees Mrs. Pencil. There is a straight look of recognition between them which Miss Ivory does not see. Aside. That's a dramatic scene. Doesn't it thrill your spine? Mrs. Pencil, may I introduce Mr. Inkwell? Inkwell and Mrs. Pencil bow slightly. Will you have a dish of tea? Cup! Cup of tea! Dish! Dish of tea or I quit! Which is it? Oh, very well. Dish, if you like. Sod's manner indicates he gives in simply to let the rehearsal progress, but that he will settle with Miss Ivory later. Please tell me that you have ordered the strikers to come to father's terms. At right of table. He is looking through his safe for more papers, so he asked me to wait in here. That's an explanation why he came in. Offering cup. How many lumps? Aside. That question of the number of lumps is very important. It gives a natural air to the scene. I am going to the dining room to get some arak for your tea. Nervously. Oh, please, don't trouble. No trouble at all. Exit right. When you want to get a character out, you've got to get him out. At right of table to Mrs. Pencil. You here? At left of table. Shh! I had to come. I couldn't live without you any longer. But in this house? I was her mother's friend. You are indiscreet. I was desperate for you. You kept putting me off. When I read about this strike, I had to come. Mrs. Pencil is the dreadful woman. A play can't exist without her. You mean she was his? Seriously? Oh, yes. The more fuss we make about her, the better. Oh, Clem, you aren't glad to see me? Oh, that I have lived for this? She tears around the stage, wavering her hands in grief, making faces of agony. Sud rises in astonishment and follows her left, shrieks in anger. Idiot! Can't you talk? Do you think I write lines to be cut? How dare you cut my lines? I've done just what it says. She takes her part from the table, reads from it, and shows it to him. Mrs. Pencil shows extreme despair and passionately. That's not the play. That's the moving picture version. Come here. He fumbles with his papers, takes blue pencil to her part, changes his mind and uses red pencil, and puts them back of different ears. Oh. Have you the same play ready for the movies? Uh, I write in columns, alongside each other. Dramatic version, moving picture, novelization for magazines, newspapers, and books. All at once? Yes. What are all the pins for? When I cut out a line one place, I keep it until I find a place somewhere else to patch it in. Hands new lines to Mrs. Pencil, who is back of table center. Ah, a great playwright has to be economical with his great ideas. Well, yes, if he wants a yacht. Studying her book. Now I see, now I see. Mr. Sud, shall I go on? Yes, go on. Sud comes down right to Woodby. Oh, Clem, I was so frightened when I heard about the strikers. Even if you are their leader now, they might turn and murder you. Mrs. Pencil and Inkwell play center, front of table. Nonsense. I control the strikers. They come to me for orders. I'll stop this strike as soon as old Ivory gives me my price. What do the bricklayers want? They want shorter hours, more pay, better light, better air. Inkwell stops and looks at Sud. Go on, go on, don't glare at me! Pardon me, Mr. Sud, but you have me say the bricklayers want better air. It doesn't sound right. 
You see, bricklayers work out of doors, and the air there is... I beg your pardon, it's in no way of criticism, sir. Come here. He cuts the line, using wrong colored pencil first. Leave out light and air. That's a confusion from bad typing in the serial version. Go on, Mr. Inkwell. Sits right of table and Mrs. Pencil left. See here, Kate. You keep out of this business. I'm not going to be spied on by any woman. Who is spying on you? You. I? Smacks his lips. Now we are coming to a big scene. There is nothing so effective as the repetition of the same words brought up to a climax. Begin again, Mrs. Pencil. Who is spying on you? Who is spying on you? You. I? You. I? You. I? Tearing his hair, going to them. <coughs> parrot! Nothing but parrot! Increase the stress, build up the scene! Build! Build! How can we build when you don't give us any lines? What do you call yourself actors for if you can't supply acting when the playwright uses dashes? This is the biggest scene in the play. Crosses to lower left. The very fact that I don't give you a lot of literary lines puts me in the class of the most forceful dramatists of the day. My plays are not wishy-washy lines. They are full of action, red blood, of flesh and blood. Now you do your part, bing-bang stuff. Shake them in their chairs out there. Make shivers run up their spines. Make them feel you. Compel their applause. Now go to it. Go to it. Sub sets the tempo, repeating their words. You. I. You. I. Get it over. Get it over. You. I. Get it over. Mr. Woodby, is it getting over? Looks at footlights. I don't see anything get over. He doesn't see it. You hear? He doesn't see it. Begin again. And please, 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 get it over. Over. He motions violently with his arms during following scene, as if to help them raise the vitality of the scene. Sud sets tempo again. Who is spying on you? You. I? You. I? You. I? You. I? You. I? What do you call it, then, coming here after me like this? What do you mean, like this? Like what? Like this? Accent it, stress it, increase it. Like what? Like this? Like what? Like this? Rushes around circuit of stage and ends near Woodby. The best scene of the play, ruined, ruined. I'm noted for my strong, laconic scenes, and you make me suffer like this. Perfectly hopeless. I say increase, you decrease. Nothing but animal sounds. Nothing but a machine. Oh, what's the use? Go on, go on. Now you see, Mr. Woodby, how actors can make plays fail. If you'd write us a decent play once, we might. No back talk, madam. I haven't engaged you yet. If you can't play it any better, I'll let you out. Show us what you can do with the rest of the scene. By heaven, if you can't pound his chest right, the box office will lose money on you. His eyes popping. Oh, must she pound him? Seeing a woman pounding a man's chest and hearing her scream is worth two dollars to anybody. Go on, Mrs. Pencil. You are keeping something from me. You have deceived me, you dog. Tell me, tell me, who is she? Where is she? You are keeping something from me. She pounds Inkwell in a rage, in innocent wonderment. Is she trying to yank it out of his chest? Pound, pound, get it over! Sud rushes back between Mrs. Pencil and Inkwell, pushes her down left, drags Inkwell to center, grasps his coat label, shakes him violently, and shouts her lines, You are keeping something from me, and pushes Inkwell to right. Sud turns quickly to her left and shows her his manuscript. I wrote applause here. You've got to get applause here, so pound! Would you mind skipping the scene today? I'll wear a football suit tomorrow. In scorn. Just like an actor to have a personal prejudice against a part. I'm not suited to it yet, but with the proper costume. In scorn. You must not rely on costume. Think of your art. But why must she pound him so hard? Because he is the villain and the audience likes to see him get it. Who is she? You are keeping something from me. What has he done to make him the villain? I didn't want an explanation here, so I had to interrupt them. Shh, shh. Here, here comes Miss Ivory. Miss Ivory enters. Such interruptions reek with dramatic intensity. 
Here is the arrack for you, Mr. Inkwell. Accepting it. Thank you. Nervously. I think I'll take my hat to my room. Inkwell gives her her hat. She goes out. Aside. Not a bad excuse, the hat. Eh, I had to get her out. Very natural. Yes, indeed. Seated at right of the table. Inkwell stands back of table, centre. Well, Mr. Inkwell, I hope we may yet succeed in claiming you as a friend, instead of coddling you as an enemy. If you treat all your enemies so well, what must you do for your friends? We abuse those we love. Nudging would be aside. Quite epigrammatic, eh? Even abuse at such fair hands could only please. Aside. Did you catch the subtlety of that line? Nervously. Will, will, will you have some more tea? Coming left of the table, to be opposite her, catching her hand. I don't want tea. I want you. I love you. Wait a moment. That's too abrupt. I have some more lines here somewhere. Looks through slips pinned in manuscript. I cut some out at the beginning of the act. When the first curtain went up and the maid was discovered dusting the room, I had the Irish butler make love to her. Handing Inkwell a paragraph. Here, Inkwell, are the love lines I was looking for. Proceed, please. Shall I go back? To tea. Will, will, will you have some mo more t tea? Catching her hand and bringing her forward, he gives speech with Irish accent. I don't want tea. I want you. I love you. Oh, my darling, it is a terrible sensation I have for you. I have. And me, your little hand in mine. And for the likes of you, I never... As all look dazed and Inkwell has trouble twisting his tongue. I beg pardon, Mr. Sud, but this is a butler making love. I am playing the part of a gentleman. Has dropped from his stool and retired in tears and rage upright. Haven't you got any brains of your own? If a musician can transpose music by sight, why can't you do the same to the dialogue? But a gentleman doesn't make love like a... Goes up stage again. Ends at his stool by Woodby. He means the same. Now go on. I can't stand these arguments. They will give me apoplexy. Oh, come on, Robert. Say anything. They sit at table again. Ahem. Well, will, will you have some more t tea? I don't want tea. I want you. I love you. Oh, my darling, it is a wonderful feeling, this one that which I have for you. Indeed, that one which I have for you. Put your hand in mine. For a woman like you, never before, for, for, never before have I seen a woman such as you. Again he has brought Miss Ivory down center. My stars, leave out the H's. That which shut Make it clear for tomorrow's rehearsal. Puts paragraph in his pocket. Hesitatingly, doubtfully, sarcastically. I ought to have my name on the program as co-author. Exit left. Jumps forward. You ought to have it cut out of a program when you forget to act. Raps on floor and cries out. Mr. Ruler! Mr. Ruler! Pay some attention to your cues, please. Sud goes off stage center, over bridge into pit. Pokes head in from left. Beg pardon, sir. I didn't hear my cue. At right of center. It's your business to listen for it. But they didn't give me the cue. Well, what is your cue? Not seen. What is it? I asked you what your cue was. A pass. What is it? Is your hearing perfectly clear? Perfectly. Then will you kindly tell me what your cue is? What is it? I shall go mad. I'm dealing with lunatics. Lunatics. Once again, I ask you, Mr. Ruler. If you can hear, kindly read from your book and tell me what your cue is. Yells furiously and is now down stage. I've been trying to tell you my cue is what is it. During this scene, all the other players come in to see the fight and grin. Wipes perspiration from brow. <sighs> heart disease, heart disease, I shall die of it. That line was cut long ago. Sud walks back and forth across the pit. The trouble with you actors is you can't forget Ah, oh, if you could only forget. I always thought actors had to remember. Any fool can remember. See here, Mr. Sud, I don't take abuse. In fact, it's my first experience taking it from authors. In all the other companies I've been in, the manager kept the playwright out. He wouldn't have him meddling about. Sud stops short during this speech. Turns, 
straightens up, buttons coat, adjusts tie, faces ruler. Mr. Ruler, I am backing the show. I haven't engaged you because you can act, but because you were born good-looking, which is scarcely a compliment to your own efforts. Other players retire, now laughing at Ruler. If you please, we will proceed. I'll find a line here somewhere in my treasure notebooks. He goes upstairs and stands near border lights, aside to hunt through many books he has in his pockets. Ruler sits left of table to rest and smoke. Mr. Ivory and Mrs. Pencil play cards out of character upstage. Talks out of character and gets light from Ruler for her cigarette. Did you see the advance notices in the paper this morning, Jack? Saying the pot boiler is sold out three weeks in advance. Bill told me there's a steady line outside of the box office. I have visions of rehearsing all night outside the night before the opening. I'm used to doing that, my dear. What gets me is the story of the plot the Sunday edition printed. How can the newspaper know the plot before the playwright does? Doesn't Mr. Sud know his own plot? Why, no. My part's not written after the second act. My part isn't either, but it doesn't worry me. These authors. She points to her forehead. I don't memorize until dress rehearsal night. What's the use? They don't know themselves by that time what lines they told you to keep in or put in or take out. The next morning the critics rewrite it anyway for the manager. I don't begin to memorize really until we're settled for a run. You'll throw me all out if you give wrong cues. Rises and strolls about. Oh, when I can't use my tongue, I let my eyes talk. The public doesn't know the difference. I don't have to act, just be myself. They engage me for my eyes. Ah, here's the precious line. Goes up to Ruler. Take it down, Mr. Ruler. I was in the neighborhood looking for some real estate. All the players suppress a laugh. Now, Mr. Ruler, you enter in time. Sud goes down the stairs again. <clears throat> you enter in time to interrupt Mr. Inkwell's declaration of love to Miss Ivory. They spring apart. Spring, Mr. Inkwell! Inkwell springs. No, the house is not on fire. I didn't say jump. Spring is the same as jump. Ruler enters from left. Inkwell goes right. Miss Ivory comes to center. There is no time to discuss synonyms. Go on, Miss Ivory. Oh, Jack, hello. Where do you come from? I was in the neighborhood looking at some real estate. Hello, Inkwell. How's the strike? Miss Ivory and Ruler cross to give Ruler the center. If you could persuade Mr. Ivory to... No, Inkwell. I'm not converted to your view. I have my own theories. At left speaks across in the light to Woodby. Now we are coming to the kernel of the play's success. The new viewpoint. Use all the stock character and situations you want, but add a new twist. What does Ruler think? Listen. I believe sternly in justice, righteous expiation of sin. Only in that way can we progress to higher things. Forms, not things. Beg pardon, forms. The position I hold today is the result of my desires in my previous life, when the trumpet calls me into the next. There I shall reap the harvest of what I have sown here. Why should we help the bricklayers? Miss Ivory interrupts. Mr. Sud. Waves her silent. Shh! If they choose in their past life to be born bricklayers here, have we the right? Miss Ivory interrupts several times. Miss Ivory is on stage left. Shh! I ask you, have we the right to tear down the building they designed when they were here before? Have we the right to say to them how they shall lay the bricks in the foundation for their next life? Have we the right to— Mr. Sud! At last, in desperation. Well, what is it, Miss Ivory? Excuse me, Mr. Sud, but all this time, while Ruler is talking, I don't know what to do with my hands. Couldn't you cut his lines? I protest. Mr. Sud, I would resent having a part shortened on me because the leading lady doesn't know what to do with her hands. I really think in this speech of mine you have shown your talent. To cut one word of it would do you a great injustice. Smiles at Ruler. Thank you. Quite so, quite so. Miss Ivory, during this scene you might be, you might be, be, um, fanning yourself to keep yourself, the heroine, cool and white. How well you understand human nature. The play is really more important than the players, isn't it? Aside, goes back on stage and sits next to Woodby. Of course, but actors are so superbly conceited. I know. 
Poor things. Mr. Ivory's entrance. The girl's father? Enters. I could not find the papers and the safe ink well. Oh, how do you do, Jack? Positions. Inkwell at top left. Miss Ivory across at top right. Mr. Ivory at bottom left. Ruler across at bottom right. Ivory has crossed the ruler and is between Miss Ivory and ruler. Good morning, Mr. Ivory. Dora, dear, do you know anything about the papers in the safe? Keep up the suspense, Inkwell. I have no lines here. A villain should sustain the suggestion of villainy whether he has lines or not. Look uneasy. Tremble. Inkwell looks uneasy and trembles. But if I see him tremble, Mr. Sud, wouldn't I ask him if he had a chill? It's not your business to be looking his way just then. Again, Inkwell. Inkwell trembles, etc. Yells to Ivory. Don't catch his eye! To Inkwell. Will you tremble again, please? Inkwell does so patiently. Count five for the tremble. Again, please. Daughter dear, do you know anything about the papers in the safe? Daughter dear, do you know anything about the papers in the safe? Excitedly. Everyone look away. Tremble, Inkwell. Now, Inkwell, count five. Now look at Inkwell. Again, please. Daughter dear, do you know anything about the papers in the safe? Claps his hands. One, two, three, four, five. Those valuable papers. That's it. Go ahead. I don't even know the combination, father. Could they have been stolen? Did Inkwell really take them? He's the villain, isn't he? I couldn't let the hero do it. What shall I do? Where shall I look? Where? Oh, where? Ivory goes upstage, back of Miss Ivory, to table, and knocks off a revolver. Oh, revolvers! Let me, sir. Picks them up. In terror. Where did they come from? Hands to ears. Are they going to use them? Of course. I had to show the audience the revolvers are there, so Ivory had to knock them down. It's upstage. Places one revolver on table. I have to have these nearby when a strike is on. One never knows what to expect. Places other revolver on table. Even I have one in my pocket. Slaps his side pocket. And I in mine. Oh, dear, how dreadful. Suppose one of them should go off. Oh, do be careful. Insinuatingly. Have you changed your mind, Mr. Ivory? Have you decided to accept my proposition? What is your proposition, Mr. Inkwell? Goes left to Ruler. I believe your father wishes to discuss it with you. Mr. Ruler, will you have a smoke with me in the orangery? Corrects him with great disgust. Orangery! Inkwell and Ruler exant right. Crosses right, anxiously. What does he want to know? Almost breaking down. Sinks into chair left of table. Oh, my daughter. How can I tell you? How can I? I am ruined. Ruined. Sud rises and beats time in rhythm like a conductor to their oaths. A little up and left of table. You? Ruined? Oh! 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 Turning to Woodby and whispering audibly. When you are hard up for conversation, use oaths. Sits quickly. We have lived beyond our means. Oh, my child! I have only brought you misery. Goes to father, stands back of his chair and caresses him. Poor father, don't take it that way. I love you. We must live differently. Anything you say. To Sud. How sweet and sacrificial. Enthusiastically. Ah, she's pure ivory. A chip off the old block. That is not all. Inkwell represents the bricklayers. He will continue the strike unless I can buy him off. Sad goes upright to be behind them, faces them, follows every line in his manuscript. And you can't raise the money? He doesn't want money. He wants to marry you. He will stop at nothing to get me into prison. Any place to crush me. He has power. I have cause to fear him. Ivory at right, at left, in distress. Oh! Oh, how terrible! How terrible! What am I to say? Oh, father, and I can save you. And I hesitate? Yes, yes, I will, father! Rushes to Ivory's arms. 
oh my daughter my child my child yes father i will cost me what it may i will she reads last line flatly miss ivory show some feeling think how you feel when you read those lines i know how i feel yes father i will cost me what it may i will mr inkwell abandonment miss ivory abandonment nods intelligently mr inkwell mr ink well rushing after miss ivory wait think consider inkwell and ruler enter right takes her hand ah my dear with bowed head oh in alarm to miss ivory my dear what is it ah there's your line of what is it i tucked it in there goes left to mr ruler ivory is up centre inkwell is right i can't keep my promise to you mr ruler please don't ask for an explanation excited rushing up to mr ivory what is it mr ivory in despair taking ruler's arm for support oh uh i'm broken-hearted she is going to marry inkwell no no not while i live it must be come with me i'll tell you alone not while i live excitedly mr ruler mr ruler you go out too easily wait i remember a precious line i cut out of one of my last year's plays it's perfectly fresh no novelty worn off and incontestably original i am coming back the ferentially ruler writes the line i am coming back yes sir i am coming back there is no yes sir in it no sir do you wish to retire for a few minutes and commit to memory i am coming back now that we are reaching the climax i want as few interruptions and references to the book as possible i think i have it all resume former positions sod climbs on his stool cue please mr ivory drags ruler across to go outright come with me i'll tell you alone not while i live i am coming back i am coming back i am coming back exhort ivory and ruler right sud tiptoes up centre to make sure mrs pencil is ready for her cue to miss ivory now that they have left us alone my darling let me tell you how i have waited for this moment in despair and tears she tries to rush by to right but he catches her no let me pass now now i have said yes let it go with that i cannot talk now not now exit right weeping in fury of jealousy opens door and enters in rage coward villain i have been listening behind that door all your false vows to me he tries to choke her don't yell so in ordinary tone i will yell delighted of course you will shriek good mrs pencil shrieks oh, oh, oh. they struggle grabs mrs pencil to put his hand over her mouth stop stop tussle tussle the audience loves it they fight but what did inkwill do talks fast over shoulder to woodby like a man in a fast auto talks to another passing can't you tell haven't decided yet explanation in the last act no time now reaching climax of the play keep it up keep it up yelling oh the treachery the perjury you are not fit to live i'll have my revenge revenge bing bang she grabs revolver from table and shoots inkwell he falls back and obligingly lies upon the table i hate you i hate you i hate you having heard a shot and shrieks runs from the wing oh who's hurt turning and aiming a revolver at miss ivory don't come near him or i'll shoot you and is from right what's the matter screams at ruler don't move or she'll shoot you taking a revolver out of his pocket aims it at mrs pencil harm her and i'll shoot you who has come to in the meantime manages to get his own revolver out of his pocket he half raises himself from his lying position on the table and aims at ruler crying hoarsely you thought you could be my rival the girl said she would be mine if you shoot the woman she'll kill the girl i'm going to save the girl shoot and i'll kill you he enters from right and hearing these desperate words takes the revolver from his pocket 
and aims at Inkwell, screams in fear and rage. Stop! Save him, or I'll shoot to kill! I'll shoot to kill! I'll shoot to kill! Thrilled and excited, cries out. Who shoots? Overcome with sudden realization, jumps up, grabs his forehead. My God, it's a deadlock! I don't know who shoots! Oh, oh shoot, shoot the water! Curtain. End of the Pot Boiler by Alice Gerstenberg.